What's up everybody? We're here in front of the saltwater tank today. My name's Paul. If you guys like fish videos, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. What we're doing today in front of the saltwater tank is we're prepping it for coral. What I gotta do is prep the two-part dose system for this tank. It's step-by-step. Step. Let's go set it up. All right, everybody, we're here at the controller cabinet for my Apex system. Here are the doses. Now, typically when you use a dose, this is what comes with it from Neptune Systems. So it's basically like airline, um, and you use this, you attach it into these, and you go from there. I wanna use something more robust. I wanna use some RO line, because it will not kink. The only issue is to connect this to here is going to be a problem. First things first, let me go ahead and pull one of these off. Okay, now for my particular cabinet, I don't have much room because my wall and my stand. So I ended up finding these right angle USB. That was the correct transfer rate style. So I am using these on my energy bar. Now after doing some research, I found these that will work perfectly in replace of these. So it's got an RO adapter here, and then it's got the threaded adapter here, which is the correct size for these. And then this goes in its place. What I'm going to do is I wanna make sure we don't have any chance of leaks. We're gonna take a small amount of some of this tape. All right, we got our Teflon tape so we're just gonna go and wrap a small amount onto the threads on the dosing pump motor. Then we get this sucker. And again, I uh, in a previous video, I showed that if you go and you put this on, you push and you twist to the left like you're loosening, you'll hear a click. Hear that click? Now you can go and tighten and you will not strip them because it's like setting it in place. I think hand tightening is going to be plenty. So there's that one. All right, so let's go ahead and speed the video up now. Likely you are not going to need Teflon tape, but I like to go the extra mile just in case. You never know when something might spring a leak and having that Teflon tape on there is just going to increase the odds of a leak not happening. What I gotta do is put some links in the description for uh, all of the product that I used here. So these adapters and the cables and whatnot. So if you are interested in this build, definitely check out the description after the video. We're back here on the controller cabinet. We got them put back in place, so all the dosing heads have got the adapters now that will allow us to use RODI. Okay, everyone, so here's where we're at so far. What I had to do was lift it off the ground. I mean, we're talking about minimum space. So I got the power cords ran through the side here um, for the top and the bottom. So I had to drill through here and run it all through using, <laughs> this is like a fish tape. Then we got the USB here to hook up into those so that we can hook it up to the apex. Now we're gonna run this behind all of this because back underneath here, I have a hole that I drilled on the side of here to run this. So while it's up off the ground, that's what we're gonna do. So check it out, we got it running right there. And then if we come back over here, see it right through there. All right, so what we're gonna do next is speed up the video again and get the RO line attached to the adapters. Now, as you can see, I am having to remove them and re-put them in. The only reason why is because of the amount of space I have to work with. So if you guys are ever going to build a cabinet or you're gonna use the dose, definitely have an area that gives you more room Again, I had a very tight spot. It ended up working out, but it wasn't ideal. All right, you guys, so check this out. We got our labels made so that we know exactly what is going where. We're gonna start off with the alkalinity. That is gonna go here. Now when we look, we know that's alkalinity in. 
All right, there we go. So we got our calcium in, calcium out, alkalinity in and alkalinity out. This right here, the USB is for this to connect to the energy bar for the apex. Now we're gonna use this and then use some electrical tape to make sure that this does not come apart because that's pretty crucial. See how I'm pulling that and this is getting pulled too. So the slack's getting pulled. So we know this is gonna plug into the energy bar. We can go and put in the little cap. We don't have anything else to run over here. So we'll go and put that into place. Look at that. Looks so nice and clean. So we got calcium in, calcium out, alkalinity in, alkalinity out. We got the USB, like I said, that goes here. This is for this one. Now I made this hole here to reach in and be able to do stuff. So that's there, the other dose will cover that. Next step, we got containers here for our dosing solution. Uh, I'm gonna have calcium, alkalinity, and I'm probably gonna do magnesium until I find something else I wanna do. Now, in order to make it work with the RO line, there are these bulkheads that you can get that have the quarter inch push fitting. So this will work with RO, DI tubing. But we need to drill a hole into these. And I'm going with five eighths because that seemed to work best when I did some tests. Dimple right there, we're gonna go and drill. So there is the hole. Now this should fit right in place, which it does, you can see. So we're gonna drill the rest of these out first. All right, so now that we got all the holes drilled on the tops of the containers, you're going to need a O-ring to just help seal it. I will have links in the description to where I got these on Amazon. And this guy is just gonna go right there like that. And then let's pull the lid off. Obviously that'll go there. And then this guy will go down here. All right, there we go guys. We got the O-ring in place to avoid water coming out. We got the nut put on the back. We seem like we're tight, ready to roll. All right, so there you go. We got all three bulkheads in that are for our O-line with the washer, the O-ring. So the next thing we got here were these acrylic tubes. Again, quarter inch for all of this type of stuff. Now what we're gonna have to do is put this here and then obviously trim it because it is too big. So what I did was I got an idea of the length that it needs to be. I do not have a correct pair of cutters for this. I am just using my PVC cutters, which are getting the job done, but perfectly, no. So, I mean, you can see that right there. I mean, it's not bad. So here we go, here is the acrylic tube, here is the bulkhead. You'll go, you'll feel one little push, and then you'll feel one big push that is in place. Now I'm gonna go and put this on. So that is all the way down, and you can see right there, look at, I got it measured to where it's just barely above that. So that should work out pretty well. So we got that one done, we got this one done. Now we need to just get this one done. There we go, we got our big click. Now that one's even a little closer, which is fine. It's above the spot, so we're not gonna have anything to worry about. So now that we got the dosing containers done, I wanna add something on top. So what I'm gonna do, and I already pre-cut it, some small pieces of RO line with some elbows. We're gonna put these together and on top. 
what I did here was not cut the line long enough for this part. So definitely make sure you cut it longer. Okay, so there we go. We got it on. Um, I probably could have went a little bit longer on the tubing, but as you can see, when I'm pulling on it, it's not coming out, so I'm not really concerned about that. Got to just keep an eye on it. That's all we got to do. So we got that one done, that one done, and this one done. Now I have more elbows. What I probably will end up doing is something like this. You know what I mean? Something, something along the lines of this so that we could run it behind it or we can go and tilt it sideways bunch of different options all right so what you could see here is i have these set in the back what i did was i just got a uh piece of two by six and i just made this little stand back here i got some material and stapled it to it versus painting it because i didn't want to wait for it so all three of these now will sit on here right next to this i might scoot it over to the corner a little bit more but there's that now. All right, you guys, so here we go. We got this all set up right here. We got our labels. So we're gonna go and just take these labels off. Put it in place. There we go, you guys. So magnesium, alkalinity, and calcium. Again, I may not end up dosing magnesium down the road, but that's how we're gonna have it set up for now. And then again, we got that little stand built, so it's gonna be right here on the back. And then right next to that is the doses. All right, you guys, so what we're doing now is pulling the lines out from behind the stand so that we can route everything to the dosing containers and also to the dosing area on the sump. Now, again, doing this DIY is going to save some money and it's fun to do, but there are options out there that aren't that expensive that you can also go with as well. I just decided to go the DIY route on this one and I picked up the containers at Bob's Red Mill, a local flour place here like that sells flour for making breads and it has other groceries and stuff. So that's where I ended up getting it. So what we're doing is just cutting, measuring, getting everything all set to where it's going to all be set in place and not have any issues and just so it's routed as clean as I can possibly get it routed. Now again if I had more room this would be a lot easier but I'm making the best of the space that I have. Now I mentioned earlier about cutting the tube longer so the part that goes from the lid on the dosing container that goes from the bulkhead to the elbow I did not cut it long enough as you can see and when I was trying to dose one of them it was giving me problems and it was not working and it's because it was pulling in air and not pulling in the liquid so I had to change that out later on in this video all right everyone so here's where we're at so far so we got all of the outlets coming in so these are all routed to the dose pumps and then i got all of the in lines so these are going to be where the dose pulls out of here runs it through the head and then it comes out and doses over here um, the only thing i'm disappointed on is just how this is i know if i was using more the airline style this wouldn't be a problem here but when you're looking at it from this angle, it's not so bad. Now, if you notice here, I have a caulk washer out. So what I got, I've had it for a while. I just haven't set it up yet. It is a caulk washer stirrer. So I gotta just run the inline over there. So the dose is going to pull the solution out of the stirrer and then through there and then go into there. What I might end up doing is I might cut these lines right here 
and maybe put some like uh, right angle elbows like this here so that the liquid will go like this into the stream over here. And then I can always reconnect them with um, with some of the, uh, whatchamacallit, the couplers. So there we go with that. Now we gotta get these guys filled up with solution. All right, everybody. So what we're doing right now is I have my BRS jugs and we are filling them up with RO water to do the mixture. So again, how I have my thing all set, I was able to tie off in here to fill this up and I have it in the bucket so that if I get distracted, it'll start filling in here versus on the floor. We got all three jugs filled up to about the three quarter mark so that we can get all of the solutions mixed together. Uh, we got our magnesium mix, bulk reef supply. We got our sodium bicarbonate and we got our calcium chloride. Now in this bag, there is some measuring devices. This is the funnel. And then you got these little pump style if you want to use these. But what we're going to do, we're going to use the funnel, which I just rinsed and wiped down. And we're going to start by mixing the calcium chloride. Now these came in one gallon mixtures. You can get these in bigger bags from Bulk Reef Supply, or you can get the pre-measured. Since these are gallons, we're going to use this whole thing inside here. Then you replace it with the cap. And then we're gonna just start shaking it. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit aside there. I'm gonna stick this under it so I know that that's the calcium. Now we're gonna do the sodium bicarbonate. calcium another stir and then we got the magnesium now this is also for one gallon so this seal this back up for now We got all three containers done. We got our calcium mixed up. We got our alkalinity all mixed up. With the alkalinity, some solution will likely sit on the bottom because it doesn't fully dissolve. What you could do is get a bucket of warm water and soak this or just let it float in some warm water for a while and it'll help dissolve the rest of it. That's what I did, worked out perfect. And we have our magnesium solution. Now I know I likely will not not use all this or it'll be forever before I use all this but that's what we're gonna do for now these are my storage containers but we need to fill these up so without further ado so we're gonna go and take the lid off of the magnesium open it up and fill this up with magnesium do it to about right right there go ahead and set it back We're going to take care of the alkalinity now. And last but not least, our calcium. These guys just lined up. As you can see, these have plenty of solution left in them. So each batch will last you for a while. You'll have leftovers ready to roll. All right, there we go. Check it out. We got our calcium filled up, our alkalinity, and our magnesium. We got them all labeled. We got them labeled up here so we know what's up. We got them labeled here so we know what's up here. We got these guys labeled. We're, I mean, we're rocking and rolling. We got these labeled. Now, something that I could do with the containers is I could get fancy, and if I wanted to get some of these um, optical sensors from Neptune, I can always go and add these onto the sides there and we can have 
uh, this run over to the Apex and let me know when these things get low. I mean, I'm gonna see them so I'll know, but if I wanted to get fancy, I can use these. Now that the containers are all full, we got a couple more things to do. What we gotta do is test the water to know how much to dose to bring it up to the desired level, and we also need to calibrate the dosing pumps. Now we're going to test the water. We got our HANA Instruments Calcium uh, Tester. We got our HANA Instruments Alkalinity Tester, and we're gonna possibly check for phosphates later, but the main thing is these two for now. So I'm gonna slide that out of the way. Well, let's go ahead and we'll do alkalinity first. HANA Instruments stuff is pretty rad. Comes with everything you need, instructions and all that good stuff. Now I got this little container. What we're gonna do with this is fill it up with some of the tank water. I got this from the actual display part of the system. So we're gonna just set that aside so we know that is our water for doing everything. So we got our checker, our vial. We got our alkalinity solution and the syringe right here. Now something that I picked up on Amazon which has been really great is these 20 millimeter syringes. Super nice to get the water that you need. You got plenty of volume here to do multiple vials at once. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and fill this up with 10 millimeters of water. We got our awesome syringe here. Okay, that should be 10 milliliters, excuse me, of solution. Now see how the solution is right? The bubble part, like the, the you got the, top here and it goes like this you want the, the low part to be right at the line go ahead put the cap back on one important thing is to always make sure it's nice and clean no fingerprints I would reuse a microfiber cloth because you just want this to have the most accurate reading as possible so we know that's ready so we're gonna go ahead and turn on the tester okay and we put it down open this up and you wanna put this in the same way every time. So if you could see the Hannah um, right there, there's some writing. So we're gonna make sure that that is always right at the front. Go ahead and shut it. Now we push the button and what's happening is it's analyzing the, the salt water. Okay, so now that it says C2, that means add. So we pull this out, take the cap off, and now we need to add our solution to the syringe with the tip on it. Set this over here in the corner. All right, we are full with our solution. Go ahead and take this. Go ahead and add our solution. There we go. Place the cap, we're gonna put the cap on here now and invert it five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Go ahead and wipe it down so we don't have any fingerprints. Place it back in the same spot that you put it in before with the 10 mil facing you. Push it shut, click the button, and wait for the reading. All right, so the alkalinity is coming in pretty low, 6.1. We got to get that raised big time to get coral in here. And of course, once you get your reading, go ahead and take your little vial out and go ahead and rinse it. Um, you do not wanna leave this in there very long. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the calcium test. This is RODI water from my system. We got our salt water right here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fill this up with one milliliter of solution. There we go. That goes into the vial. Then we are gonna use this guy and get 10 milliliters of water, or almost 10 milliliters of water. Basically fill it up to the line right here. I'm gonna set it up over here so I can make sure I get it to the right spot. We're gonna go ahead and replace that cap now. Now that we got that in there, invert three to five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's, I mean, six, really. And again, you wanna make sure that there are no fingerprints of any kind on here. You wanna place that at the front every time. You just want the same reading every time. Go ahead and shut that, and we're gonna go ahead and press the button now. Back out. 
So there we go. Now what we want to do is we're going to use this guy with this on the edge. Now these got two pushes. So one push is what you want to do when you're extracting your fluid, not all the way down. Here we go. Push down to the first, go into the water, extract. You just go here and you start pushing, pushing, pushing. And then that second push gets the last bit out. Now the next thing we're doing is this is our reagent that we need to use and cut on the dotted line and make sure we twist here okay so now that that part is cut go ahead and open it like this and I saw Eat Sleep Reef do this so a huge shout out to him we're just gonna go and pour the reagent in there tapping with our finger just to make sure we get every last bit of it so now we're going to replace the cap and shake it vigorously for 15 seconds now that we shook it for 15 seconds we're going to kind of just want to invert it a couple of times let it wait just a smidge because you want all the micro bubbles to get out all right so now that we got the vial all wiped we're going to go and again place it where the 10 mil is right at the front shut it push our button and see what happens 384 on our calcium all right last component is to test the magnesium i'm using my salifert test kit so we're going to get two ml of salt water okay put that into the vial then we get mg1 do five drops then we're going to go here and add one scoop of the powder with this little spoon there we go add the powder swirl this for about 10 seconds all right now from there what we're going to do is get this syringe with the tip we're going to fill it up with this reagent right here this plunger you want it to be at the bottom of the one there's going to be an air gap in there but that's okay because of the tip okay so we're set how much of the solution do we use before it gets blue okay well we basically used it all now it's blue so let's see so after looking at it it was a few notches before it went all the way down so that is going to be right about here so i'm going to say we're in between this as far as our magnesium is concerned 1440 and 1470 because our solution turned blue so what I did was I calibrated the system for the calcium so I figured out exactly what I'm doing so I could show you guys. So let's work on the alkalinity now. So what I'm going to do is just unscrew this so that we can confirm that the liquid is indeed going through. The next step is we need to get our alkalinity tube here that goes into the sump out like so. Now I got this little hose here with a coupler and this little container to catch the material. So here's what you can see what we did. We connect it there. So that right there is the output that goes into the sump, but we're gonna use it here because what we have to do is we need to pull liquid out. You can do this with salt water, but I'm just gonna do it out of here so everything stays primed. Uh, you need to flush the pump so no air's in there. So also make sure your connections are nice and tight because if they're not, tight like let's say your hose is too small uh, and you didn't get a nice good seal um, it's not gonna prime because it's pulling in air versus having a tight seal so definitely make sure you do that now that we got that off in this set we're gonna come on over here so on the dosing pump you can see this side is our calcium this is our alkalinity so this is how you prime this side and this is how you prime this side so let's go ahead push the button what we want to do guys is confirm that we see liquid going through the tube see the liquid going up once we get a steady drip out of here we know that the lines are primed we know that the pump is primed and we move on to the next step of getting this thing calibrated all right there we go we're starting to get a drip now you can see how those drips look very milky because of the air. I'm just gonna hold it for maybe about 20 more seconds and confirm that we got a nice steady drip. All right, you guys, 
we are all set. We move this out of the way. And I just have these guys set on top here because what we want is this vial now to go here and we're gonna move on to the next step of the process. So what happens here guys is you calibrate it. The pump stopped. So now we're gonna go over here and just pull this out and we'll set it here to see where it's reading out at. So that right there is just above 42. So we're just gonna say 42. So now that we have the measurement, what we do next is go to the Apex Fusion dashboard, put in how much liquid went into that vial and it helps calibrate the dosing unit. And that is what we did. And then of course, always save your work on the Apex. So what I want to do, since we obviously use some of the alkalinity to get this thing primed, I want to pull the lid off really quick. We have our alkalinity jug and we're just going to go ahead and top this off a smidge. I just want to get it up near the top. Next step is getting the dosing all set up. So we're going to do the calcium out right now. Now, in order to do that, I got to get all the air that's in this part of the line out. So you come over here and you push this. Now, if you look here, you're going to see a bubble in a second, that, uh, the black tube. All right, everyone. So we're here at the Apex Fusion dashboard. So here is the dosing center for my system. We got our alkalinity and our calcium. Now you can see we dosed 161.1 milliliters of sodium bicarbonate, being the alkalinity, from about 12.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. That's a lot to dose in less than 24 hours, but we're going to tell you why I did that. So if we go over here to the bulk reef supply calculator, we're going to select alkalinity. We're doing this in liquid sodium bicarbonate in the new pharma pouch. So now we need to fill out this data. My tank's 120 gallons, but between the rock and then the sump with water and everything, I'm gonna say 110 gallons. Now the current alkalinity level was 6.1. I wanna achieve 10, let's calculate. So this is saying 612.8 milliliters. But if you take a look down here, it says avoid increasing alkalinity levels by more than 0.5 or 1.4 dkh per day. So let's go ahead and switch that. We're going to go to 7.1. Let's just be on the conservative side, 1 dkh. So this is 157.1 in a day. You do not want to dose these two at the same time. It's very important to make sure you dose the alkalinity for a certain stretch of the day and then the other stretch of the day, you do your calcium. If these mix, it's not a good thing. So because I'm trying to raise my DKH, doing this in a span is totally fine. Now you can see the calcium here is reading at 12.3. I was checking a few things and bleeding it, but let's go ahead and set up our calcium. Let's go back to the bulk reef supply calculator. So we're gonna do calcium, liquid calcium chloride and the new pharma pouch. So same volume of water. So the current calcium level was 384 and we want to achieve about 450. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So 743 milliliters. Now, if we take a look right down over here, we can see try not to increase calcium more than 50 ppm per day. If large changes are required, spread the dose over a few days. Test between additions. Okay. Now, also, because I don't have any corals right now, I'm not too concerned. So let's try not to go more than 50 ppm per day. So we want to add 50 ppm to this. If we do the math, that comes out to 434. That's our 50. Let's go ahead and calculate. So what we need to do is dose 562.9 milliliters of calcium into the tank. Okay, so now what we want to do is set this on the opposite side of the alkalinity. So my alkalinity runs from about 12.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. So what we want to do is we want to start this after that. So here's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Let's just um, do this. 4 o'clock, let's go 4... 10. At 4.10, we're going to start to dose, and we're going to stop 
dosing 23.3. All right, so basically from 410 to 1103, we're going to dose 562.9 milliliters of calcium. So if we click OK, we can see our chunk of time here. Ideally, I would like to spread this out further. So I ended up thinking I'm going to change this to 400 instead of the full dose because I'm going to be able to test in between and see how well this is. Now again, keep in mind that because I'm trying to get my levels up, that is why we're dosing where we're at. But once I get the levels where they're at and start checking how much my system consumes in a day, then I can go and adjust the intervals according to that. All right, you can see the dose working and we're coming on over here and you can see the calcium dripping into the system. This is where we got our water flow that really starts right here. So this is a good spot for it. Very awesome. Very awesome indeed. Great news everybody. So I tested the water on the tank and my alkalinity is rising, my calcium is rising. That is exactly what we want to see. So the dosing, pump, everything's working great. We got our numbers all right, like we figured out on uh, Apex Fusion and the Bulk Brief Supply Calculator. So the levels are rising on this tank, which is exactly what we want. Now again, after we get the alkalinity and calcium where we need it here in the tank, then it's going to be about testing the water to see how much of these elements are consumed uh, over a certain stretch of time, maybe a couple of days, and then I can tweak the dosing numbers on Apex Fusion for the dosing unit um, so that we can maintain that number. So we're building up our alkalinity and calcium. Once it's there, then it's going to be about figuring out how much to dose to maintain those numbers. And then obviously, once I start to add corals into the tank, you know, SPS, LPS, stony corals and things like that, they're going to absorb you know the alkalinity and the calcium so we're going to definitely need to retest and see how much is being absorbed from the corals so we can adjust again so it's all a game on getting everything adjusted right um right now is the beginning stages like we said to get the numbers where we need them so we can get the coral and then keep on measuring tweaking everything and it's going to be absolutely amazing i am so stoked. I know that this was a very long video and I thank all of you for watching. I hope it was helpful for you all and I hope you all enjoyed it. For those of you who are thinking of adding a dosing system to your tank, I hope that this video was helpful and that you may consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Also, for those of you who don't have a tank or are not thinking of adding a dosing system, if you guys found it entertaining and all that, I hope that you guys could consider subscribing as well. And comment down below, everybody. I read all the comments. I enjoy responding to everybody and talking and all that good stuff. You guys are what make this channel relevant. Thank you to all the viewers out there, to all the subscribers out there, and to anybody who's considering subscribing. Thank you so much. Hope you guys all have an awesome day. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay tight.